This video covers section 8.1 from your text and really covers two main concepts. The first thing we're going to be doing is reviewing linear equations. We should all know how to do that. And then after we've covered that, we're going to talk about solving absolute value equations. Let's first just review with a basic linear equation. Remember when we're solving equations, we're trying to get the x or whatever variable it is by itself. We're trying to isolate it, and we use inverse operations to do so. So in this first example, the first thing we want to do is get the number negative 12 over the other side. We do that by adding 12 to both sides. And the 12s cancel, and we're left with 3x equals 21. We have 3 multiplied by x. The way we undo multiplication is to do the opposite operation of dividing by 3. If we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other, which gives us x is equal to 7. Now, as a reminder, with any linear equation or any equation we solve, we can always check to see if our answer is correct by plugging it back into the original equation. I'm not going to do this with every problem, but I'll do it on this first one to show you how to do it. So we have 3 times x, but in this case we figure out x is 7. Take away 12 is equal to 9. Of course, 3 times 7 is 21. And finally, 21 minus 12 is in fact 9. It checks out. Thus, our answer of 7 is the correct solution to the equation we started with. Now, we all, anybody that's done algebra for a while, knows that equations are not always this easy to solve. They're not just two or one step problems. In fact, many times there's parentheses and fractions and so forth. So, we're going to talk about a couple more examples that are a little bit more complicated. Example 2 here, we have two sets of parentheses. And usually, the first thing we want to do in these problems is go ahead and distribute. Now, the most common mistake by students, made by students, is that when they distribute on that first set of parentheses, they don't distribute the negative with the 3. And we want to make sure we do that. So the left hand side is going to be transformed into 5x. And we're going to take not just 3, but negative 3 times 4x, which gives us a negative 12x. And then also negative 3 times positive 1, which gives us a negative 3. Likewise, on the right-hand side, we're going to distribute the 4, getting a 12x plus 32. So we've gotten rid of the parentheses. The next step usually done is to combine like terms on each side of the equation. So that means we need to combine the x's over here. And then on the right-hand side, we want to combine the numbers, the 3 and the 32. So when we combine the x's, we have negative 7 x minus 3. And then on the other side, we want to combine the numbers, which gives us 35. So now we've got it simplified down. we got variables and numbers on both sides. We want to get the x's on one side and the numbers on the other. And when we're moving terms around, it's usually easiest if we move the smallest. So if I'm looking at the negative 7x and the 12x I want to combine, the negative 7x is smaller. So let's move that to the other side by doing the opposite. Instead of subtracting 7x, let's add 7x. Because we know that when we take a negative 7x plus positive 7x, that cancels out and makes 0. So now our x's are on the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and move the numbers to the other side. So we have positive 35. Let's subtract. 35. Subtract 35 from both sides. Here the 35's cancel. We're left with negative 38. Negative 3 plus negative 35 is negative 38. And then on the right hand side we have 12 plus 7 is 19 x. And then finally we want to divide out the 19 to get x by itself. So we end up with x is equal to a negative 2 because negative 38 divided by 19 is a negative 2. Again, you could check this answer as well by plugging it in for all three spots where there's x's here, here, and here, and to see if that is in fact the correct answer. Now, the third linear example I want to give you is one that has fractions in it. 
And anytime we have fractions, you could work with fractions, but the math gets really ugly and messy. I mean, there's no other way to describe this example as than I think just to call it ugly. So let's make it look pretty. And the way we do that is we multiply, if you remember from Algebra 1, we multiply by the least common denominator, also known as the LCD. We multiply by that. And in this case, the, multi the LCD is going to be 6, because 6 is the smallest number, it's the least number, that all three denominators, 2, 3, and 3, will divide evenly into. 2 and 3 both go into 6. 2 and 3 both go into 12, but 6 is the smallest number that 2 and 3 both go into. So we are going to multiply everything by 6. We're going to multiply the 1 half times 2x minus 7 by 6. We're going to multiply this, the 1 third x times 6. We're going to multiply the 4 thirds x times 6. And this is a common mistake. A lot of times students forget to multiply the negative 5 times 6, but we need to multiply everything. Remember with equations, if you multiply one thing by something, you have to multiply everything by that. And the beauty of this is that because 2 goes into 6, we lose that denominator. 2 goes in 3 times. And also 3 goes into 6 2 times. 3 goes into 6 two times. So that all three denominators are now ones. That makes this a whole lot simpler. We are now left with, instead of six times one half, we now have three times two x minus seven. We now have, instead of a one-third x, we have a two x. Let's move over to the right-hand side of the equation. Instead of a four-thirds x, we now have a two times four x, or a eight x. Instead of a negative 5, we have a 30. Now we have something that looks a lot more like the equation we just worked on. So again, here we'd want to distribute. That would give us 6x minus 21 minus 2x. By the way, is this equation not a whole lot better to work with than the last one we did? I think so. OK, combine like terms. 6 and a negative 2x gives us a 4x minus 21 equals 8x. And then let's get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other. So let's move all the x's over to the right since x's are the 4x is smaller than the 8, which means this negative 30 has got to come over here become a positive 30. And we end up with positive 9 equals 4x divide both sides by 4, and we get x equals 9 fourths. Now, many times for students, they get to this point and they say, oh, I got a frac fraction as an answer. 4 doesn't go into 9 evenly. I must have done something wrong. Actually, it's okay to get fractions as answers. In fact, many times when your original equation starts off with fractions in it, you will get an answer that has fractions in it. So don't be scared off by that. And if you really are concerned about it, you could do the math and plug it back in and see that it actually does work out as a solution. Now, it's kind of messy in this one, but you could do that. Okay, so now would be a good time to go to your um, self-check page and try self-check number one and see if you can find the correct answer for n. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and come back and we'll cover absolute value equations. Okay, welcome back. I hope you were able to get the correct answer on the first self-check problem. We're now going to talk about absolute value equations. Remember, absolute value is the distance that you are away from zero. Absolute value means distance. So we can get 13 in two ways. We can get 13 by having the absolute value of 13 or the absolute value of negative 13 because both 13 and negative 13 are a distance of 13 away from 0 on a number line. So here's 0, here's negative 13, here's positive 13. They both have that distance of 13 away from 0. So what does this mean? This really means that that x plus 6 right there, it has to be 
either 13 or it has to be negative 13. So that's all we do to solve. We say, okay, that x plus 6, that has to be 13. And, or that x plus 6 has to be negative 13. It's one or the other. Well, both of these are easy to solve. I could subtract 6 from both sides on both places. If I do it on the left equation, I get x equals 7. If I do it on the right one, I get x equals negative 19. Either one of these answers, if you plug them back in, if I plug 7 back in up here, 7 plus 6 equals the absolute value of 13. That's what we wanted, right? Which equals 13. What if I did negative 19? If I did negative 19, negative 19 plus 6 is negative 13. And again, we know the absolute value of negative 13 is positive 13. Now, when we have two answers, a lot of times we want to write our answer as a set of solutions. So we're going to say in um, braces here, we're going to put negative 19 and then 7. We're going to write it as a set of solutions. Now, sometimes we have to do a little preliminary work when we're doing these kind of problems. For example, the next example in order to get it to look like the one we just did, we need to isolate the absolute value first. So let's make a little note of that. Note. Sometimes we need to isolate first. In this case, that entails adding 12 to both sides. We add 12 to both sides, we get the absolute value of x plus 4 is equal to 18. Again, the only way that this can happen is if that x plus 4 equals 18, or if the x plus 4 is equal to negative 18. Because absolute value of 18 equals 18 and the absolute value of negative 18 equals 18. Again, these are two things that are very easy to solve. If I subtract 4 from both sides, I get 14 or I get negative 22. So our answer in this problem is negative 22 and 14. Okay, moving on, I have w one more example like this, and that is example six, and that's what happens if, you know, it, well, it's really a special case. What happens if, again, we isolate the absolute value? Well, if we do, we end up with the absolute value of 3x minus 5 equals negative 7. And this is a case where there is no solution. Think about why we don't have a solution in this problem. Hopefully, you thought up uh, that we can't, the absolute value always comes out positive. Remember, the absolute value of a positive or negative 18 is always positive 18. We can't have an absolute value be negative. So this is a contradiction. This is a false statement. Because this is right here, this is a positive result because it's the absolute value. Now, shorthand, uh, you're, I'm going to start writing no solution as this is zero with a slash to it. This one has no solution. Okay, now would be a great time to do self-check number two. So go ahead and try self-check number two. Pause the video and come back when you are finished. Okay, last problem, number seven. This one is slightly different than the other ones, but it's still the same concept. The concept here, when we have an absolute value equal to an absolute value, is that these inside parts, the arguments inside the absolute value, the x plus 12, and then the other argument, 2x minus 9, those two values have to be the same in magnitude, but they can be opposite in sign. In other words, the absolute value of 7 
could be equal to 7, but it could also be true that the absolute value of 7 is equal to the absolute value of negative 7. Notice in both cases we get 7. So what I'm saying is is that this is true if the argument x plus 12 is equal to the argument 2x minus 9 but it's also true if the argument x plus 12 is equal to the opposite or the negative of the argument 2x minus 9 because of this whole argument right here. We could have 7 equals 7 or 7 equals negative 7. x plus 12 equals 2x minus 9 or x plus 12 equals the negative of 2x minus 9. And then we really just have two linear equations which are pretty easy to solve. I could subtract x from both sides and add, add 9 to both sides which gives me x equals 21 for my first one. Or on my second one I could first distribute negative 2x and a positive 9 and then add 2x to both sides and subtract 12 from both sides and, uh, and I end up with 3x equals negative 3 which means x equals negative 1 if I divide both sides by 3. So my answers in this case are negative 1 and positive 21. Alright, so let's go ahead and now look at the last self-check problem. You can do that one and then I will see you in class. Thank you.